Tell you baby face show will be back after these messages. Thank you. 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 You're welcome back to the Teju Baby Face Show. You can feel the excitement in the house. Uh, you know how we do on the show. We bring you uh, people from all levels of success. You know, we've done the kings on this show, the legends. We've done the King Sonia Days and the Ebenezer Obeys, Orlando Julius's, the K1, the Ultimate. You know, we, we, we've done that on the show. You know, Yinka Ifele, Adewale Ayuba. Then, you know, we've gone new school. We've done Kore De Bello and Ricardo Banks and, and all that. You know, we keep bringing you kings on every level. Uh, the young man who is coming to the stage, to the set now, uh, ruled, was one of those who ruled the year 2016, and he said to rule 2017. He had a hit single that even I, who considers that I don't really understand hip-hop like that, I, I like the song. You see, I like when a song is African, but then he has that, uh, you know, that dynamic. It, it was just such a beautiful song. To the degree that I know the words, me, old man like me, I know the words to this hip-hop song. If you're ready with me, please give a Teju baby face welcome. For the one and the only or more, Yeleko, May your cool! Don't get it twisted, it's puffy on the beat. One look, man, I'm sorry. Pick up, put it down. For sure, diggy out of the way. Baby, soon, balata. You're supposed to be straight with me. Oh, I love you, bala. Big bat, my love, oh, do I look more?
Stay tuned for more because the Teju Baby Face Show will be back after these messages. Welcome back to the Taiji Baby Face Show. I'm moving my camera, I mean my microphone, you know, to the left. When I move to the left, I'm moving closer to the man. Awesome performance, wasn't it? Please, one more time for Mayor Kuhn. Awesome performance. Awesome. Awesome, bro. Awesome. Look, first, let's start from uh, this. How old are you? I'm 22. 22. 22. <laughs> Look, you're, you're, uh, so how old were you when you did this song? I was 22 too. <laughs> you're 22 then. Uh, look, um, you're going to be a star. Because mm. when I was 21, 22, mm. I was introduced to a director and I appeared in a movie. Uh, you know, it was called Diamond Drink. That was when I became a star. So you're going to be a star. Amen. You know, you're already a star, but you're going to be a bigger, Amen. 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 A bigger Amen. star. You know, a director came to my school, begged mm. me to be in his film. Uh, that Tadio Guido begged me and so I did the film for him. <laughs> but, but awesome. Awesome song. Mm -hmm. I mean, how I, I believe this song has changed your life. Yeah, sure. So, what was your life before this song? Just. And I, I've been a normal guy. Like Come I went on. to school. What school? University of Lagos. All of you go to uni, lad. Great <laughs> answer, for that. Great. <laughs> Very great. What course? Accounting. Accounting. Yeah. Biz admin. Yeah. Sure. Eddie Omolewa. Eddie. Yeah. Eddie. 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 <laughs> Yeah. We know ourselves, Eddie. Yeah. yeah. Great. How was school for you? Me, I failed big time. <laughs> to be honest, uh, to be honest, I wasn't like accounting wasn't the thing I wanted to do. I was so confused because I was an art student, secondary okay. school. Okay. So, so how did my, you get into accounting? My mom asked me that. Okay, what do you want to do? And I was just lost. I don't know if now song I want to sing or I want to act or just and so I was just lost. So somebody just chipped in this idea that. Accountants can work anywhere. That was the only thing my mom heard. And they can work anywhere. Ah, they, they get money. Ah, yeah. so, you know I had you know I had an identical story to yours. Uh, we could we could almost be brothers. I also was going into University of Lagos not having any idea what I wanted to do. And they said the same thing and I put in for accounting, but I was chosen for insurance. <laughs> yes. Story of my life. So you put in for accounting and you got accounting? Yeah, I did, I did. Because like if you were an art student, the only subject you need to apply for accounting was just account. Yes. So because I was already doing government, I was already doing I think literature, but literature was it. So I just did account for like six months. Okay. I had to learn it. I had to like I went to the You are lucky. Course. Your mom agreed for you to go to art class. My own parents refused. <laughs> They sent me to science. I did physics, chemistry, biology. Three of the most evil subjects on the face <laughs> of the planet. I can't, I can't cope. I, I couldn't can't, cope. I can't cope with that. I couldn't cope. Why? Yeah. In case you never knew, that physics, don't let me. Mojinya, who knew? Just in there. Anyway, uh, but seriously, I mean, don't cheat. So how yeah. was, are, are you a graduate now? Yeah, I'm sure. No. What year? 2014. It was supposed to be 13, but ASU strike was like for seven or six months. So I was there. During that time, I worked in a papa. Okay. Because I couldn't stay at home for that long time. So, but 2014. So you're BSc Accounting, yeah, sure. University of Lagos. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're not just a singer. No, no. no so no. if for any reason you're not just enter again, you can carry your certificate. Sharp. Sharp and go and work. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, you had an extra year, Abby. Lila, uh, never. <laughs> excuse me, please. Don't make those of us that had it feel bad. <laughs> I, I thought we were brothers in the mother, and I was saying Lila, never. No, no, I did. I did. Really? I, did. I, I had to. I, I, even, I even registered for like a professional course. Again? Yeah. ACCA or ACCA. You were yeah. going to do ACCA? ACCA. What's I, wrong I was with even, you? I was even doing it there. You were doing ACCA? I was doing it while I was working in the bank. Long story. You worked in the bank? Yeah. Okay, well. <laughs> 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 I, I'm not understanding your story. Okay, so uh, let's get this. You graduate. Yeah. Then what next? What did you do next? I served. You served? Okay. In Anambra for like a year. You went to Anambra for a year? No, my level. Okay, then you came back? Then I came back. 
Then we had this um, neighbor that used to work in Sterling Bank or something. Okay. So he said, uh, I should just go and start ACC because all this BSC now, I don't talk what uh, just uh, everybody. <laughs> all this BSC is now normal. It's not. So it's not you have to deal. just okay. upgrade your stuff. So I entered for that one, and he said, "There's this bank recruiting new students." If I show, so I did. I passed the interview, and I started the job. You passed the interview? Yeah, no, no, no. Of course, you didn't go looking like this. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> not this. Let, hair. let me shock you. When, when I went for the interview, when the when the man saw me first, he said. Why do you look like an artist? <laughs> this man, guy, I wore suits, tie, shoe. What else do I need to look like a banker? <laughs> <laughs> well, he just said, you look like an artist. And I said, just, just, just go on with this thing. And he asked me the questions. He asked me like five. I got four. The fifth one, I was about to answer before he stopped me. So I passed the interview at the end of the day. And you started to work in the bank? Sure. Okay, so, uh, I don't clap yet. Uh, believe yourself, low mind We are getting there. So, so at what point did this uh, Mayoko artist thing happen for you? I'm curious. Um, the banking job wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Because when I was in, after the interview, the guy was just telling me, that you're too smart, you're too this, that you can earn like 300k in a month. So I was so hyped about the job. I even told one of my friends, now, my well, job don't do, can't they do this one, 300k in a month. So, but to my greatest surprise, the first month was like 5k. 5k? Naira, not dollars. <laughs> 5k Naira. Like was what you earned? What I earned. How does a banker earn 5,000 Naira? I tried to. What, what yeah. happened? <laughs> so, like, the second month. Was it a microfinance bank? If I say the name of the bank. Apologies now. to microfinance banks. If, I, that, <laughs> if I say the name of the bank now, you'll be shocked. But I earned 5k. Then the next one was like 7.5. Was it go up to 7.5? Was like 7,400. Sorry, were you a sorry? Were you a driver? Sorry, you were, you were, you were, you were working. <laughs> even, even our driver earned more than I was earning that time. Our driver was 45k. But that was ridiculous. What what were they telling you was the matter? Like there's this formula they used to get our salary because I was doing business banking marketing. Just as I was always on the streets, not. Most so your earnings were tied to your marketing? To my How many accounts and I, and you opened? I did, I did. I just knew that it was scam, yeah, because So that thing is true. They pay you by how many accounts you open and how much money you got in. Was, the first month, I, I got like 190 something accounts. The first month? You got so 190? So if you me like 1K on an account, I should get like 190 something okay. thousand. I wondered how I... Ended up at 5,000. 5K. The next month, I relented, I earned more. Okay. 7.5. <laughs> I think the next month too, I think it was about that range to 7K. Okay. The highest I earned sir, before I left was 20K. What? In I, what year? 1978? 2014. <laughs> like, like three years ago. All yeah. you earned for working in the bank was... So I remember that I went home with that 20K and my brothers were like, ah, oh boy, you don't have my... 20... <laughs> Let's go and buy. <laughs> so I, I bought them, I bought them, is this thing we eat that time? Nkwobi. Nkwobi, yes. Like one place, 500. It was like luxury to us. So we bought Nkwobi, two curry day, everybody. Lavish, eh? welcome to the good life, Johnson. So I was living because I didn't like that pay. I had friends, I had brothers, I had a sister too that was looking up to me. So I went for another interview in another bank. This one was promised to pay 75K. I passed that interview too. So like on a Thursday, I had this phone. I had this video too. I was playing the video song, The Money, featuring a lot on the keyboard, like 15 seconds. So I just said, okay, let me just post this thing on Twitter. I just did. Because I was leaving the bank. I was so happy that I was leaving this 20K bank to another bank, 70K. So that Friday, I just saw something on my. I don't usually get mentions on my Twitter. I don't get. You didn't. Not that you don't. You didn't. I never. It's like nobody. Who cares about that time, Abby? Who this guy was. Okay. So I just saw. Davido favorited your tweet. One. Davido retweeted your tweet. Two. Davido sent you a direct message. Three. When I saw the direct message, I wanted to die. <laughs> because, because I was already planning on where to get money to buy my new pant trousers and shirts. I already had one suit that I wore from one of my mom's and the one that so I kept that one. So when I saw that, he now said I should send my WhatsApp number. 
I sent the wrong one while I was while you were shaking, shaking in excitement. Like I just sent. So I sent the new one. So he called me. So I was waiting for the call because normally I used to follow this entertainment thing. People can come out and say my account got hacked. Just I wasn't the one talking. So to you were you weren't sure it was him. I wasn't sure. I saw the verified thing, but but the moment you heard the voice, hello, so well, hello, hello, hello. <laughs> I hope you know the talk. I said okay. <laughs> I <laughs> don't. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I was, I was so shocked. At that point, I knew that I don't think I was going to this bank. One well, that it took off from there. Your career took off from there. Uh, amazing, amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. <laughs> All right, uh, we'll take a short break. We'll be right back with Mayor Queen in the house. Stay with us. <laughs> Stay tuned for more because the Tell You Baby Face Show will be back after these messages. Therefore, where do you get wisdom from? I put it to you that there are two ways in life of getting the wisdom that you need. There are two ways. Dr. Mike Mudok said that there are two ways in life of getting wisdom. One is experience, and the other is at the foot of a mentor, or at the feet of a mentor. He says that God uses experience to teach those who are unwise to find a mentor. So he teaches them through experience. I like that saying, but I have modified it a little. I believe that to get wisdom in life, you need the two. Experience and the feet of a mentor. You will have one of them anyway. Whether you try or not, one of them is happening to you every day. Whether you try or not, you will get experience on a daily basis. The fact that you're sitting here today is an experience. What a mentor does for you is to qualify your experience and allow you to see your experience in such light as you can draw wisdom from them. If you have to wait to get wisdom yourself from all your experiences, it will be a lot of wasted effort. Often, you find that most of the things that you learn on your own through experience, you learn by hindsight. Years later. It is years later when you stand and look at it with the benefit of five years that you get the wisdom from that experience that you have or that you had. But because we don't have a lot of time, it is advisable for you to find a mentor. God can teach you what he has done to get where he is, which usually is where you want to be, and can help you put your experience under a strobe light, qualify your experience, so that you can get the needed wisdom from those experiences that you had and that you are having. So what am I saying? Maximizing your destiny. Do you know what you want to be? And having known what you want to be, have you identified a mentor who is there that can take you hand in hand and give you the requisite experience, the requisite knowledge, the requisite wisdom that you need to get there. You need to find a mentor. You need to find a mentor. I will say it one more time for emphasis. You need to find a mentor. Everything that I am doing today, I have gone through mentorship and service to do. I started out in the comedy industry following Basaj Taria Jr., up and down. The man that you've seen recently on your screens has do good. I followed Basaj Taria for almost two years. The things that Basaj Taria told me when I came to him as a neophyte, an unexperienced undergraduate of the University of Lagos, wanting to be a comedian, are some of the things that are still the pillar for everything that I do today. Basaj, as soon as he saw me, he said, tell me a joke. The year was 2000. And somebody had introduced me to him from uni, like I was in year four. Basaj said, tell me a joke. At that time, Basaj was one of the hottest things in entertainment, in the Nigerian entertainment industry. He said, tell me a joke. So I told him a joke. He said, tell me another one. I told him another one. He looked at me. He said, I like you. He said, I like you. He said, I like the fact that you are different. I will never forget that word. He said, you have pedigree. He said, you have polish. He said, when you stand and talk, it is easy. For anybody to see that you are well brought up and you have gone to the best schools. He said, however, 
that polish and that pedigree will be a problem for you. You're welcome back to the Sergio Wafer Show. I still have Mayor here and we're having uh, an, an interesting time, a famous time. Now, yeah. that's your song. I, I, I promise you, uh, there's, a line there, uh, there's a line there in the song that I think you, maybe you made a mistake. It's just that I sing it differently. <laughs> I, I, in my mind, I, you can't mean that line. So yeah. let me sing uh, that part for you. Baby, don't you go, let go. What I used to hear. Mm. Was Warikwe Moro get gone? That's what mm. it meant to me, you know. Okay. But somebody now corrected me that it is Warikwe Moro Bieko. I'm as soft as pap. pap yeah. As a man, I can't think of anything that will make me want to be as soft <laughs> as pap. God forbid. God forbid. God forbid. God forbid. How many men here want to be as soft as pap? Soft as. Eh, Robieko, please yeah, explain. Yeah, yeah. Why would you want to be soft? There's nothing about a man that should be soft. What part of you is soft like pap? <laughs> Uh, for me, it was metaphoric, sure. Yeah. Because my grandma I stayed with, she doesn't talk straight. Okay. Like, that, that line means that I'm cool, calm, I'm collected. It's not like I'm so. I don't even think there's a part of me that is so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They should not be deceived. No, no. <laughs> I, I just mean I'm, I'm a very calm guy. Because I just can't bring myself to sing that part. Yeah. Why are you playing more rugby? Eh, I'm, no. I'm not. I'm rugged gone. That's what I say. <laughs> Why are you playing more rugged <laughs> gone? <laughs> <laughs> That's that, that part. Uh, final question for you. I hear your mom is in the arts. Mm. Really? Yeah. We wanted her to be here, but uh, she got, what, was this something you got from her? Singing? Yes. And this singing was from everybody I was with while I was growing up. My mom sings a little, which was in choir for like seven years. My dad sings, my brother sings. At some point, I used to have a girlfriend that sings too. At that time, I used to like girls that could sing. Yes, that's it. Sing was like a family thing. I used to have a grandpa too. I have a grandpa too that sings too. You said you used to? I have an <laughs> uncle too that yeah. sings. My grandpa is lit, so okay. I have an uncle that sings. I have, like almost everybody around me sings, so if I don't sing, I think I'm a bastard. <laughs> okay, uh, final question. I, I, I like to ask all artists this. Uh, I was speaking to somebody just last week, and they said that in the Nigerian entertainment industry now, or in the Nigerian space or in the African space, uh, things are moving so fast that in his words, if they're not here from you in two months, they don't forget you. Yeah. So we named some guys who were raining in 2014, and they said, where are they? They are gone. And it seems to be moving very fast. If they don't hear from you, it doesn't matter if you had a hit single eight months ago, you're done. Yeah. Uh, so I always like to ask this. There, there are a few guys that remain, I don't want to use the word relevant, but that remain impactful. Yeah. You know? So you have this great song that I love. Uh, what are you going to do to make sure that you know, five years down the line, it's still me, your con, who is there on top? And what, what's your own formula? Uh, first of all, I, I, I noticed that I did the song because I wanted to do it. I didn't do it because I wanted people to like it. It got to, it got to a point when the label was trying to select from the five songs I had, but they chose that one. And that song, I just did it because it was something personal to me. Just, and so I just keep on doing me, doing myself. And I know people that love me for what I do will still love what I'm going to drop next. That's a good, that, that's good an answer already. All right, Mayor, well, thank you so much for coming. Thank I wish you a long, rewarding, fruitful, impactful, yeah. and relevant career. And we'll have you back over and over again. God bless you, my brother. Bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Stay tuned for more because the Teju Baby Face Show will be back after these messages.